Okay, welcome to the show. This is TED Talks Too Much. And I think we got a great one for you. I am Ted Moss, ex made at a private girls' school, stand up comedian, and your host. We are located in the OK Boomer Studios just outside of Flint, Michigan. That's right, Flint. Michigan's water wonderland where they're still wondering when they're going to get some clean water. But while we all wait for that, let's talk. And on today's show, it's part two of Mr. Ron Rigby. That's right, it's just more of me and Ron, two old white guys. And we'll be talking about dating, religion, dating, comedy, dating, and more. And we'll be back with that. In just a sec. We are looking for a few good men. That's right, men. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, are there some perky perks. Have you ever thought a man's rectory is a place you want to be? Have you ever seen people rise when a bride in a long white dress passes by and think, oh, I want to be her? If dirty stories are your thing, Better than Penthouse Forum, we've got a quorum. And they're lined up to tell you true stories in person. That's right. You could be the professional in the confessional where you can listen and no one can see your hands. Just contact us at Holy Joe's Super Seminary where you never lose your job because we specialize in transferring trouble. Or just go to surroundmewithboysanddresses.com where you can apply today. Here we go, Ron Rigby, part two. If you enjoyed Ron Rigby, part one, you're gonna love this. It's just a conversation between two old white guys. But I tell you what, Ron Rigby is one of the nicest people I know. I think he's hilarious. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy Ron Rigby, part two. Let's give it up for Ron. Ron, you got to realize we're old white guys. Whatever we think is probably wrong. The good thing is that we're going to be dead not too long, and right. so that people don't have to worry about it. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think people, young people, think that we're joking, but really, when you get to this age, you're, you're, the death isn't horrible. Death isn't like the worst alternative, in my opinion. No, I, well, mm. you know, I told my kids that I've done more than I ever expected to do, especially yeah. coming from where I came from. Right. So if I die, don't worry about me. I'm fine. I did great. Right. You know, it's only the people you leave behind. I can, and it, you leave too early. I think that's an issue. I can remember being young and like maybe smoking weed or partying and thinking, man, I, w w w is there ever going to be a time when I don't want to do this? I hope there's never a time when I don't want to do this. And then the time comes where you just go, I'm, I don't want to do this anymore. You know? yeah. And people think, why aren't you going to party? Because I don't want to anymore. And they're like, no, that can't be. Well, that, that's what no. happens. As you get older, you don't want to do things that you did as a younger person. It's weird to, you, you can't relate to it when you're young, but as you get older, like, you just don't want to do that shit anymore. Well, so. it's kind of like I'm over it. I've been there. I've done kind it. Of, yeah. Yeah. You know, I did so many drugs in college and, and you know, I'm around kids that smoke weed and stuff. And yeah. Like, yeah, no. Well, I'm even kind of that way with drinking. I used to be known for my drinking. Oh, really? I didn't think you were a big drinker. Were you? <laughs> if you go back to my high school and read what they predicted for me 10 years out of high school, it was being a drunk. My dad was an alcoholic. My mom was an alcoholic. My sister was an alcoholic. My other sister is an alcoholic. I mean, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of drunks around me. And I used to drink weekly in high school. I drank a lot in college. When I was a senior, you probably too, you're a little older, but when I was a senior, you could drink at 18. So we would go Friday night from school, high school to the bar. You were 18 in high school? Well, close enough. Were you held back? No. <laughs> No, well, how old should you be in high school? I graduated at 17. Me too, but I was July. I was July. But I so, was August. And at that time, yeah. they were like, fuck, you're close enough. Come on, yeah. on the bus. They didn't even check ID because it was 18. You know, yeah. it's like we, we just came from high school. You're old enough or whatever. But did you see my post where I got carded the other day? No. Yeah, I got You car got carded? I got carded at Target. What were you buying? Well, that's the funny thing. Oh, I mean, you can buy groceries and beer and wine at Target. So in any oh, case, well, I yeah. was at Target and that's I was buying right. some groceries and I picked up a beverage and I put it up there and um, she said, I'm going to need to see some ID. And I thought, I haven't even run my credit card yet. Why so obviously it was alcohol. Well, 
Let me oh, tell okay. the story. All right, sorry. So <laughs> I said, what do you need that? And she said, for that, and, and pointed for my beverage. Yeah, for my beverage, for my eight-pack, six-pack, yeah. whatever it was. And I said, are you kidding me? And I put both hands up. I said, really? And I kind of like, look at me, right. really? And she said, oh, yeah, need to. And I said, okay, I, I will show it to you. But I got to tell you, last time this happened, Nixon was in office. Right. <laughs> Jesus. And she's like, who's Nixon? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? And I said, I gave it to her. And I'm like, I, somebody should take a picture of this. That's stupid. I, no, yeah. I was I was like, do, if we're going to do this. We're going to do this. So I, uh-huh. Here you go. I gave my ID. And I was born in 52. I'm like, all right, there you go. <laughs> so How there, old was this person? You know, they were probably 30-ish. Mm. But I think they were instructed to. Uh, check everybody's ID. But the weird thing was what I was buying was ginger beer, which is like root beer, but it's ginger ale beer. So it wasn't even alcoholic. No. Yeah. But they didn't know. They didn't even know. I mean, it, they, I, apparently not. It, well, it kind of looked like beer mm. and the picture on the side of the little thing, it was packaged like beer. So they just assumed it was beer. Yeah. But I figure, you know, if, if there's any problem with my age, it's probably I'm too fucking old to be drinking ginger beer. Well, <laughs> sorry, you're too old. You can't drink this shit. Yeah, but so come on. I mean, what kind of a person thinks someone our age should be carted? So I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it, was, it was a very weird thing. I, well, I was, I, I thought it was a Kodak moment. Maybe was it was proud, this person's man. first day at work. Not maybe, that I'm not maybe saying she you was trying to get a date a, with me. Maybe she thought I was cute. And thought, I was a woman. So yeah, she might've been, she wanted to get your, when yeah. you gave your license, maybe she got yeah. your address. Real I quick. should ask you that before we get out of here. You, do you have any dating advice for me? I had some really good advice for, I tell everybody from Billy. He had, when he was on the show, he gave me great dating advice. And as you know, I've been seriously dating and looking yeah. for somebody for uh, six years now. In six years, I have not had a study, but I have gone out with oh, literally hundreds. Well, of, last time uh, I was dates. with you, Ted, you were yeah. out with a a beautiful woman, and you show me your picture. Yeah, I've gone and, out with some really yeah. good looking what, ladies. What, what's the? Can you tell me the reason why none of it's sticking? <laughs> Without just a quick answer, like me or you know. Uh, I'll tell I'll tell you why. When Every time I'm going out for the first date, mm-hmm. in my head, I'm kind of like, yeah, baby. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. I'm thinking yeah. this is going to be good. That's great. That's all, Pete. That's the way you should be. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is going to be hey. the one. And then. And then what happens? It's, I had a date yesterday, dude. And it never fails. I I go in optimistic. I, I, I like Probably talking to happy. people. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk about anything right. you want. You almost I'm, talk too much sometimes. I do talk too much. <laughs> I totally talk too much. But I'm glad to go right. ask you about any of your life. Let's share. Let's whatever. And on the way home, I, it never clicks. And so I, then I'm like. It's her, isn't it? It's, it's not me. It's, it's not me. It's, it's her, oh isn't boy. it? It's her, right? <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> it's bad. What now, was she like yesterday? What was. Uh... Okay. Yesterday, I was not proactively seeking to go out with her. Uh-huh. She was okay looking mm-hmm. and see, I like good looking women. That's going to be and, a problem. Well, she's that. okay, but she was okay. She no, wasn't bad. I just meant it's going to be a problem that you said that, but go ahead. <laughs> well, keep yeah. well, no, it's well, I'm, I'm being honest. Yeah. Okay. I mean, my ex-wife was very beautiful and I like beautiful women. Are I, your standards like, is that like well, a thing? Well, probably too high. Yeah. My, you know, uh, yeah. you know, they're above, you know, my game. Mm-hmm. How about that? Yeah, probably. Yep. But I, I really like good looking women. And mm-hmm. I, I got to tell you though, there's a lot of guys that cannot date good looking women. And I truly believe that some guys are intimidated. Some guys are too possessive. I mean, I've had friends that jealous. Yes. I've had guys, friends of mine that meet a good looking woman and I'll go, dude, she's too good looking. You can't go out with her just because I know his game isn't at that point. His right. self-confidence isn't at that point. He's going to be jealous or yeah. angry or upset yeah, or she's worried. She's out or, of your league. She's out of your league. Well, it's not because it's not because she won't like him as much as he's not going to be able to maintain a relationship with a woman. That's going to get that much attention. Right. And my daughters are gorgeous. And I've always told them the same thing. I've always said, look at being very attractive has some benefits. People are going to want to talk to you. They're going to notice you. They're going to start off being happy talking to you. You're going to have that foot in the door at all, at all times, but it also has a downside. 
There are guys that are going to be overly aggressive to you in ways they shouldn't be. There are people that are going to say things inappropriate about you, where if you weren't as attractive, they might not even notice you. People are going to make passes, offers. They're, they're, there's, there's both sides to that. It's a two-sided coin. It is. But as for me, I enjoy being with a good-looking woman, especially if she's smart and self-confident. That's my kind of gal. And I need somebody that's not easily intimidated. You know, I, I don't want to scare people off because, you know, of my past or experiences or anything. So it's a hard, it's a hard find for me. Right. So yesterday... <laughs> The gal was, you know, she was okay looking and her background was okay. So you said you didn't really pursue her. She, or pursue her. she kind of contacted well, you and said, let's give it a yeah, whirl. Yeah, we, you know what? She said hello via a dating site and right. I said hello back. And she was nice to talk to and we shared a couple things and had some commonalities in our career and kids and thoughts. and Same age-ish? Uh, she was, Yes, she was older than I usually date. Mm -hmm. My ex-wife is 55. She uh, was 60, I think, or something like that, mm -hmm. but in range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in range. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. And no. she was fit. She was in good shape. Um, and she was extremely quiet. She was, mm -hmm. you would probably pin her as shy. Mm -hmm. That's not really a good match for me. Not you, no. Well, you know... I, <sighs> If we go to a party, I'm going to be walking around talking to people. No, she'll I'm want not going to be, be holding your hand. She'll want you to be next to her. The yeah, whole time. I'm, that's not that's not a good couple for me. So I need somebody that's self assured or confident or you know that's important. Mm -hmm. Whether it's and that's not a looks thing. It's just no. And uh, also, she uh, sang in the church choir, hmm. and I'm an atheist. Oh boy! Now I'm now I don't lead with that. No, you know, my ex wife was Catholic. All I right. have friends that. You know, my wife, uh, my girlfriend prior was Seventh-day Adventist, and I used mm -hmm. to go to church with her sometimes and stuff. So I can hold my tongue, and right. I, I have appreciation that this is important to people, and I get that. But if you're leading with your religion... Yeah, then it's a big thing for it, you. It's not going to be a good match for me, because right, no. if you want to talk about this, let's talk about it, and I'll ask you about Jesus and the right. flood and the, who wrote the Bible, and we'll get into these conversations. I think that's fascinating. I've studied that stuff. Sure. Uh, I listen to the atheist experience sometimes out of Austin, Texas, which I think is a great show. Mm -hmm. um, and I've listened to people who believe in God, who don't believe in God. And by the way, being atheist doesn't mean you believe there's not a God. It just means, means you don't hold a belief that there is one. I thought that was agnostic. That's what people think. But Gnostic is about what you know. Theism is about what you believe. Mm -hmm. If you hold a belief that there's a deity, you're a theist. If you don't, you're an atheist. So... You don't believe there is a deity? No. I I don't hold the belief that there is a deity. Oh, okay. I do not hold the belief that there's not a deity. And people think because it's a positive and negative question, you have to either think one thing or the other thing. But I'll give you an example. I've written Harley Davidson since I was a young teenager. Mm -hmm. I think Harley Davidson makes the best motorcycle in the world. Bar none for no reason is any other motorcycle anywhere near the quality of a Harley Davidson. Do you agree? Gotcha. Do you, no. Do you oh, agree? Um, no, I do not agree, Ted. Do you think it is not the best? I think there are better motorcycles out there than a Harley Davidson. Okay. Well, that, then you have an opinion, but there are a lot of people that you'd ask that to and go, I don't know. Cause I don't know anything about motorcycles. Oh, okay. Maybe there is, and maybe there isn't. Gotcha. So I don't hold the belief one way or the other. I should have said that because that would only, help my story. Yeah. A lot, well, well but the only motorcycle I've there. ever owned is a Harley Davidson. And, <laughs> but you know, I've never, I, BMWs might be great, you know? So yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, no, I really no, don't. You're, you're, but my point is there, yeah. there are situations where people go, I don't hold the belief that it is the best, nor do I hold the belief that it is not, not. the best. So it, it's possible to actually be in a position where you don't hold a belief. Yeah. So when it comes to a deity, a God, an ultimate being, an overseer, I don't hold the belief. I don't hold the belief that he exists. I don't hold belief that he doesn't exist. Therefore, when it comes to theism, I'm an atheist. Yes. You know, now when it comes to what you know, I know this for a fact, then you're a Gnostic about that fact. Uh. And when you aren't, sh when you don't know, then you're agnostic. So most people think atheist means I believe there is not a God. Right. That's but what that, I thought that's too. that's not true. Gotcha. Yeah, it's just people don't understand the terminology. But that, in any case. Another 
area where you're exactly like George Carlin. <laughs> same. <laughs> Same Too exact- much information. No, not that. No, that, that's exactly. I mean, he had bits on that. You know, I mean, uh, he, yeah. was a, he was an atheist as well. And he he did great bits on that. But yeah. this is how you parallel him so much, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. I th- And I- if they ever do that show yeah. where you're doing dead comedians, All right. I'm definitely going to vote for you to well, do well, Carlin. Well, let me know ahead of yeah. time and I'll think I'll about it. I'll talk to Jay. or um, Which one of his bits Richard. would you have me do? Oh, fuck. I don't know. It depends on how much time you get. Would you do, have me do the dirty words thing? or would yeah, you that'd, do be, me a, that'd be a good one. I think the religious uh, one would be a good one, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, the all-seeing, all-knowing, almighty God. Yeah. He knows everything, <laughs> knows everything. But he always needs money. <laughs> exactly. That that? That's hilarious. <laughs> I know. I think that's hilarious. I, I, I would like to, you know, I started to write a bit one time about uh, the flood. Mm-hmm. And like, if you're really going to literally believe in this, because I went to classes to become a... Uh, Married to a Catholic, and they took me to classes. Oh, I had to actually yeah, listen I can't to people. Imagine you in those classes. I know it's terrible. My wife was like, <laughs> oh, "Poke me in the ribs," because yeah. I got my hand up. I'm going, "Hold it!" Right? You actually believe <laughs> yeah. that Noah really existed? Right. The story, and, and if so, why wasn't he mad at the fish? Right. I mean, all the yep. fish lived. All the other animals, and and then he took two of each. I'm thinking more than half were carnivores. Right. If you're the fourth camel getting on, Did I'm they ever thinking say what he fed y- them? your supplies. Well, and even once they get off. Oh, he would feed them like other animals, like chickens when they had uh, yeah. eggs and they would grow. Maybe give the tigers And the when chickens. you get off, what do you eat? Do you eat uh, your mate? You, what do you eat? I thought it was funny. Talk I talked, about shit dumping in the water. Eh? I, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny. Chris Lazar wasn't clear on the fact that the animals were one of each sex. He thought it might be two, like two boy gorillas. And yeah. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? The whole Just purpose- bring one if that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> what, are they bringing gay gorillas on the right. boat? Yeah, I don't know. Jesus. So in any case, I, I took those classes. I was not good. but I had, in, in, in senior year of high school, I had a social studies type teacher. Yeah. His name was Mr. Lask. He was Jewish. Yeah. And he claimed that he was in his 42nd life. And he would tell us about things that happened thousands of years ago because he was there. Oh, and, and he claimed to he, have memories. He was there. Oh, yeah, yeah. He knew them all. And I, the one question I asked him was Fucking about teachers, Moses man. parting the Red Sea. And he's yeah. like, Ron, let me tell you, I was there for that. <laughs> I swear to God, and this is a, a senior high teacher. Oh, come on. He, oh, he did. Uh, was he serious? Serious. He wrote he books, was serious? too. He was a writer, too, yeah. I said, so what What happened? Did, did, did Moses part the Red Sea? He's like, no, he didn't part the Red Sea. He goes, as we were running from the, well, I forget who they were running from. Uh, actually, uh, they were, uh, 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 let my people free. Yeah. It was the Israelites were running were, f- from the Egyptians or whoever that was yeah, that, that yeah. held them captive. He said it, were was, slaves. it was a complete torrential downpour. And as we, the, the sea was dry. So as we were running, it's getting wetter and wetter and the water's starting to flow. And they, he goes, they were like four hours behind us. So by the time they got to the body of water, it was just raging and they couldn't cross. And they made it seem as if Moses said, we will pass, but they will not because I will make the water. That's what happened. Dude, that's a great story, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're going to say you were there and explain did, some yeah. weird shit, yeah. that's a good way to do that's it. That's what he said. Yeah. Was, was, he, was he on the boat with Noah? Probably. He used to talk about a lot of the Holocaust stuff, um, you know, what happened there. Was and, he a uh, German soldier? No, he was. I think he was a Jew. Cause he, he was one of the good guys, obviously. Yeah, Why would yeah, he be a bad guy? No, he wasn't a bad guy. Yeah. 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 You ever listen to Jordan Peterson? No, but I think you did tell me about him before. Yeah, Jordan's interesting because he said... He, if you think you would have been one of the good guys back then and you were German, think again. Mm. Because you probably wouldn't. Because we all have that in us. Yeah. And he said you go through a progress, uh, progression. First, they get you just to help round up people. Then they get you to help round up people and then, you know, remove their jewelry. Mm-hmm. Then you get them to take off their clothes and walk them over here. And then you get them to and you stand in front of the door. And eventually you're the guy that's, you know. Putting them in the gas chamber. Yeah, putting them in the oven or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's a, it's a progression. But yeah. anyhow, back to my date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was it that bad? Yeah. She sang, <laughs> she sang in choir, so we weren't a match. So did you have dinner so, or just like bullshit no, for a while? No. Uh, you, well, you know how this process goes, don't you? Not really, no. Uh, oh, you that meet process? You, no, 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 no. Oh, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> you see each other's picture. Yeah. Then you te- one text. Yeah. Then you text back. Yeah. And you go back and forth. If you go back and forth about four times, then you do what's called a meet and greet. Uh-huh. So you just show up and you have a drink. Uh-huh. And, and then you try Is to that keep what it that like was last Yes, night? it was uh-huh. a meet and greet. And I try to make those not go for more than an hour. Uh-huh. 
But then again, I try to make my podcast go and not go for more than 40 minutes. And let me just ask you, cause I, I've, <laughs> I've been married for a very long time. Yes. At, at the 45 minute point in that date last night, and you know, you're it's not working out. What do you, what do you like? Okay. I'm ready to go now. Or how do you wrap that up? Like, Usually, I look towards the door mm-hmm. and just say... Do you look at your watch no, sometimes? No, no, no. No, it's usually just, just I look directly from her, make sure I have good eye contact. Yeah. Then I looked at the door and say, next! Oh, <laughs> Jesus. That's a... That's a that's a break, right? That's a that's a that's a quick break, right? Well, there. they know at that point. They know. Uh, <laughs> no, that, that would be the hard part. It's like, okay, well, I, I think I'm going to get out of here now. Because what if she says, "All right, do you want my number?" No, y- you raise one finger, you look towards the waitress. This sounds like a joke. No, this oh. is true. This is really what you do. All you right. raise one finger. Yeah. You look toward the waitress and mm-hmm. you say, "Check, please." Mm-hmm. And that's it. They know. Then she knows. Then, you're ready then to, you know you're, you're ready done. to bolt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, did I ever tell you about the redhead? Mm-mm. Should I tell you about the redhead? Yeah. Oh, God. I thought we were wrapping this thing up. No. Uh, <laughs> I want to hear about it. Well, okay. Unless you got a time thing. No, 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 dude. This, if you can stand the you stories. you can cut this shit out if you want. I mean. <laughs> yeah. um, on the internet, you judge people by their pictures. Yeah. But pictures and profiles are like LinkedIn. You can submit whatever the hell oh, you want. Oh, yeah. And nobody's going through and sorting. There was a redhead that had posted a picture and she was very, very attractive. And as a redhead and redheads often do this, uh, she had a picture of herself in a green sweater Mm -hmm. outdoors in the fall with the fall colors behind her in the trees. The red hair and the green is really nice. Yeah. yeah, She did. You know, I kind of like ladies with fair skin. So she had fair skin, not a lot of freckles. Sometimes redheads get too freckly. Yeah, freckly yeah. yeah, but she's beautiful. Very symmetrical. Just gorgeous girl. Very fit. Nice sweater on. Kind of, not yoga pants, but, you know, tailored oh, pants. Oh, it was a full shot. It was a full, full shot. full shot wow. of her in, in good shape, standing in front of uh, this beautiful background. Nice. So we talk back and forth. Very friendly, easy to text to, mm-hmm. you know, which is really kind of the current form of chatting. So easy, yeah. easy to talk to. And at some point, one of us, and I can't even remember because it's been a couple of years, but one of us suggests, how about we get together for a drink? She says, okay. And this, this had to be a few years ago because I wouldn't do this nowadays. She invited me to come down and meet her at a local restaurant. Well, she lived down like in Birmingham. And for those people who aren't from the Detroit area, uh, Birmingham is a very nice, well-to-do uh, suburb of, of Detroit. And I went down there and we met at an upscale restaurant, mm-hmm. which happened to have outdoor dining. And it was summer and the dining was elevated on a deck, maybe two, three steps up. And uh, I arrived early, which I normally don't do anymore, but I did at this point. Yeah. Um, and... I took a position on the deck at a corner table where I could see her walking up. She's going to be a redhead. Right. How many good looking redheads are going to be walking up? You can see the parking lot or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I can see down the street in both directions. It's very, very nice. Very upscale. And I ordered just water. I'll wait to order her drinks until she gets here because I think that's polite. So, um, and lumbering down the sidewalk. Uh Uh-oh, lumbering doesn't sound good. (laughs) Comes a lady she was fit. wearing a muumu dress. No. Which is just a long piece of material. That's a cover me, over her cover shoulders up. Yep. with a great big opening for her neck that showed many rolls of fat. Oh boy. With red hair so sparse you could see her skull through her red yeah. hair. But I wouldn't even think that's her. Walking I would think up. that's someone else. Oh, it was her. Oh, no. She looked like she had eaten the girl in the pictures two years prior. What did you Or maybe even, 10 years did ago. Did you ask her what was the problem? And so I got out of my seat, walked down the steps, walked over and said, hi, I'm Ted. She said, I'm so-and-so. I thought, okay. I gave her a hug. Hello. I said, we're up on the deck. So I helped her get up the steps because she was having a hard time making it up the wooden steps to sit down on the deck. I pulled out her chair, let her sit down. And the waiter came over and we ordered wine. She was drinking wine. I thought, that's fine. I'll have a glass of white wine, too, or whatever it was. Then you'll raise your finger and say, check. Well, we talked for about, well, this is early in my dating life, but we talked for, I'm going to say 15 minutes, 
maybe 20 minutes, long enough. I kind of shooed the waiter away a couple of times. We were having conversations about kids and life and right. you know, backgrounds, that kind of things. You know, we had talked a little bit online, so I knew what to talk to her about. And then I figured we were about there. And the waiter came up, and we had menus in front of us, and I had looked at the menu. And it was uh, it was very expensive. Yeah, everything in Birmingham is. Yeah, and I'm not really sure. I can't even remember how I knew that. If there, I can't even remember if there was prices on the menu, but somehow I knew it was very, very expensive. And the waiter came over and said, uh, would you like to order now? And she said, yes. Mm. And I said, I'll take the check, please. Good. <laughs> because she, she, was, she was running the scam. She was she getting free was meals. She was upset. She looked at me and said, what? Where's my dinner? Yeah. Said, you are not getting a check now are you we're what we're not going to eat you are not going to buy me dinner Mm. and i said could i have the check please to the waiter so i excused him and i looked at her and i said you really think that that's the problem we have right Right. now the problem facing us is the fact that you aren't going to eat for free (laughs) this is this is the issue in this social gathering yikes is the problem that you're not getting food. You think that's what's holding us back here? Mm-hmm. And she said, well, I can't believe you'd make me get all fixed up to come out here and bring me here and not offer to buy me a meal and on and on and on. Just out of curiosity, because you're not from Birmingham, did she pick that place? Yes. Uh, oh, yeah yeah, yeah. 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 She knew what it was. Right. She's going to get upscale, upscale dinner yeah, yeah, yeah. out of the deal. I mean, that was the deal. And so uh, she said, well, in that case, I'm going to leave first. I said, be my guest. Yeah. And I stood up, as the gentleman should, and watched her stumble down the steps and waddle back down the sidewalk. Wow. And so I paid for the very expensive wine yeah. that we had. And I thought to myself, never again. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do this. This is not right. So subsequent to that, anytime that I've met somebody from Birmingham or the adjacent communities that are quite upscale, I've always not insisted, but suggested that we meet somewhere in between my place and your place. I like to get people off their turf because I'm going to be off my turf and I'm not there to buy you dinner. I'm there to introduce myself and meet you. And I tell you what, if we like each other, I'm not even going to ask you out. I'm going to go home and I'm going to text you later. And I'm going to say, geez, I had a really nice time. And I'm going to say one of two things, probably not a match, but I had a good time or that was a lot of fun. I'm going to do this this weekend. Would you like to join me? So that gives them a way to say no. Because I have found in the past, when you ask them face-to-face at a greet and meet, or meet and greet, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes they'll say yes, because it's awkward to say yeah, no. Yeah. But when you're texting, it's easier to say, sure. you know what, it was fun, Ted, but I don't think so. I think I'm going to pass. Yeah. So in any case, uh, the people that you meet online, you want to have a very short meeting with them it's hard for me to not sit there for an hour with new people because I think new people are interesting and I talk a lot. Yeah. Um, but if it goes over two hours, it's too long. Yeah. You, you got to just kind of meet him. Go. How? What was There's the chemistry? There's no way was to, to weed that process out without meeting the person. Is there? Really? There isn't. No. I mean, I mean, how about even like like FaceTiming where you can see the person talking to you? Was that, have you ever done that or is that I, an option? I've only done that with my kids. I hate doing it with my kids because we're back to the why I don't tape myself when I perform. Oh, you can hear yourself and all no, that no, no, crap? I can see myself. Oh. And I think, God, I look terrible. If I could see myself right now, I'd be going, oh, God, Ted, get rid of the company. Go oh, to bed. Take a nap. Gotcha. Something. You look terrible. So I've never face chatted. So you can you, you, you see yourself when you're doing that? Yeah, well, you're, yeah, you're in a little window in the corner. Oh. what you look like and then they're in the big window oh so you could put a like a sock over your picture if you wanted to right or put a something sock like over that. my head yeah <laughs> well all that too you know yeah. a ski mask i should you do could, that for facetime why don't you i should facetime people with a ski yeah. mask on that would be hilarious and not just a ski mask one of those that they wear in mexico when they're the uh the wwf wrestlers with oh the, yeah with the cool uh yeah. mask on something like that oh that'd be awesome then you'd probably enjoy it and you would do a lot more of it because you're looking at that dude we should you know what that we could put that on the internet. Yeah, that would be a great yeah. little comedy thing just to do things like that. Two guys in masks. Yeah, and they're FaceTiming people. 
Yeah. But we'd FaceTime people I know, but then they'd get on and they wouldn't be sure they knew you. And we could have a weird background, too. Yeah, and the, and the great thing was we'd have anonymity. And so we could go out in public and no one would know who we are once we become huge. It'd be, and they wouldn't bombard us because we'd have ah. masks and they'd never know. Oh, you know sweet. what? I want. Can I be the face? Can I be guy, the guy in the mask? But I want to wear a, a 1930s hat, one of those old hats. Yeah, you could do that. All there's right. no reason why you couldn't. There's uh, not. There's I'll not be the hat a, guy. No rule like that. Yeah, yeah, you could be the sunglass guy. I like. I kind of like the color green, so I'd like like a green and white <laughs> mask if I could have that. <laughs> yeah. Good idea. You know what? My, when my wife, my ex-wife li- worked at a Catholic school, they had a buzz-in thing, and they always had kids manning the buzz-in. So you, when you came up to school during the daytime, yeah. and because they you get worked buzzed there, buzzed in. No, you, anybody getting in, they locked yeah. the school down. Right. Then you got to buzz a thing, and then they can see a picture of you on the computer, oh. and then they go, eh, "Come on in." Right. And in the winter time, your kids went to school in prison, didn't they? What was well, that? Well, it was there? a Catholic school wow. in Flint. Well, it was in the wow. bad section of Flint, but yeah. it was, so that's how you got in. But you know, the people that worked in the office, they always had a, a student assistant that was always manning this darn thing. Wow. And I'd take my my ex wife was the art teacher, so I take up art supplies or whatever, or come up meet her for lunch, whatever. But occasionally I go up there in the wintertime. I always thought, wouldn't it be hilarious? I'd love to come up here in the wintertime when it's really cold and blowing. Yeah, wearing a ski mask, right? What do they do? And see if they buzz me right. in with a ski mask. You know, I'd, I want to get a full right. yeah. open, the, open the fucking door. <laughs> Ted, didn't you tell me about a comedy thing you did where a place where they had to get buzzed in once? A comedy? Yes, I did a comedy. Yeah, I did down in Detroit. Down in Detroit, you had to get buzzed in. Was there a big audience all getting buzzed in? No, or? no, there was a, yeah, was a mean looking audience. Yeah. It was pretty rough. No, that was good. That was actually wasn't a bad place. It was no. uh Something West. I can't remember something West. Uh, Rebecca, I want to say Conceptiani. Oh, Con- yeah. You know what? I got Rebecca. invited to do that, but I had like pneumonia or something. I couldn't yeah. go. Yeah. It, it yeah. It was actually a very good place. Yeah, Josh Adams was, was down there. Oh, yeah. I've heard Josh it was a good place. Is really, yeah. yeah. But it was weird because it, all it is is a bar. And there's nothing but the bar and a set of booths behind the bar and a walkway. Oh. And you're walking up and down the walkway between the people sitting at the bar and the booths. Oh. So you're basically performing in an aisle. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Are they on either side of you? Oh, uh, well, if you're the bar's them, on one side, right. and so the you're booth's almost, on the other you're side. You're almost in the round, but you're in the... Well, you're at the end of it, but you can walk down it. Yeah, you're like comedy on a runway, almost. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah, and they're kind of left of you and right of you, and if you get down too far, they can't see you because they can't see around the people in the oh, booth yeah, facing yeah, the other yeah. way. Yeah. So you kind of got to work the aisle. Hmm. But actually, that was weird because I got there, and it was in a an area of Detroit that I was not familiar with, and it was not a high-rent area, Mm -hmm. as you can imagine. Yeah. And I parked and looked around and locked my car up securely. Right. And I went to the back door, and it was locked. So I went around to the front door, and the front door was locked. Mm -mm. And on the front door, it said, go to the back door. And so I went back to the back door, and I was wiggling the thing. And while I'm wiggling the thing, I noticed there's a button there to push, and it's I think it said press button. So I started to press the button and then this dude buzzed me in. Was there one of those little trap doors that he opened? one like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. Pass void. What are you doing? Give me the pass void. What are you, you fucking doing here? Hey, what do you, do you know Jimmy? Did Jimmy right. send you? Yeah. What's the code? What the fuck dude? Right. Yeah. You got, you bring the stuff. Yeah. Put a 20 <laughs> through the fucking hole. And I'll let yeah. you in. Yeah. No, but they did frisk me once I got in. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. They, they frisked you, but they didn't card you. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't care. How Lucky old you didn't have that they ginger know beer. You that, they had that ginger beer with you. You would have the card you. Exactly. They want to know if I had weapons. No, no, they were good. You could be sixteen as long as you don't have weapons. Yeah. Welcome aboard. But yeah. the show was pretty good. Well, not bad. I, uh, quite frankly, oh, let's see. Josh Adams is hilarious. He was yeah. not performing, but he was there. There's like another room, a pool room. Uh, there was a guy that went up at the very end of the PJ's. show. Was it PJ's West or something? Right? Like I think it was yeah, something, like, something that. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, it was the audience was predominantly black, mm-hmm. and I did my Negro jokes, and just a white guy saying the word Negro gets their attention. Jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they roared. Wow, that's good. I had a good. great show. And everybody up to that point where it was kind of weak. There was uh, the girl that ran it was pretty good. But the other people in in front of me in that particular show, and I had been there two weeks prior because mm-hmm. I just wanted to see what it looked like. Uh, but the people prior to me were, uh, I'm not even sure they were really comedians. Some of them were just kind of, if I talk enough, I'll say something funny kind of thing. Mm. You know what I mean? They were just really yeah. starting out, trying to figure out 
how to do comedy stuff. Right. Where I was going to actually do a routine. I was gonna actually going to do my set. Oh, yeah. And I had, you know, I had a bunch of jokes. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't often get a chance to do my what I call my Negro routine Mm -hmm. because I I have to do it in front of a black group. If you do it in front of a white group, they're so defensive about black people and the black people will say, no, listen to the the jokes. They're offended. They won't laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they don't realize, you know, the target of your joke is, is not always the subject of your joke. You can have a subject where it targets other people and actually that little bit targets racism, but you got to listen to it to understand that that's what I'm saying. And it takes about a minute, but I've done an all black room and done that and had them just love that. But if I do it in a white room, everybody gets offended and upset. And I've even had white girls yell, that's racist. And I'm like, yeah, it's not. Right. And I've actually talked to my black friends and they, she wasn't listening to the joke actually right. when that happened the one time. So anyhow, right. I had a good, I had a good set at the room. It was kind of a weird situation and they did have to buzz me in. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. We were talking about that uh, black comedian from Flint uh, that was, had the same opening. Brian as me. McCree. Brian. And I was talking to him about it. I said, you know, anytime I've done a black room, I've done really well. Mm-hmm. And he said, I do terrible in black rooms. Wow. Yeah. He said that, uh, uh, that's not his audience. It really mm-hmm. isn't his best audience. And, uh, he went on to explain why mine was, was uh, I did the Ann Arbor comedy showcase one time and yeah. it was there like week. It's the first week back for grad students. So it yeah. was all 21 year old to 23 year old girls. And I'm up there at almost 60 telling prostate jokes and they were not taking it. They didn't like it. Didn't like it. It's terrible. No, I was up there for six minutes just getting nothing back. Oh, man. They're looking at me like, what is this fucking old dude talking about? Yeah. So that wasn't great. You know, that 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 happens. They weren't my lane. You know what? I've actually had that at Ridley's a couple times. Really? That, um, you know, this there's a group of people that is between the ages of, I'm going to say, uh, 25 and 40, 25, 35, but this mm-hmm. demographic, this kind of the That's hip. the millennial, isn't it? That right, right around there. I don't know what the label is, but, uh, my jokes really aren't targeted for them yeah. and, uh, nor are my sensibilities. They right. can't identify with my old people stuff. And I'm sure that's yeah. what you're doing. That's what I got. Yeah. Well, yeah, I went down to, uh, Livonia, which is, a. Uh, for people who don't know, is kind of an industrial community, very similar to Flint, mm-hmm. Livonia, and I did a bunch of political stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, back during the last campaign, I did a joke about each one of the people running uh, for office, but you had to know who the people were to get the jokes. Sure. The people in Livonia didn't, didn't know who know. the people were. Right. And so it didn't work. So I think you got to find your audience that you appeal to. Now, I think once you become famous, your audience follows you. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but different. at our age, That's different. you know, in, in our experience, we need to find our demographic that works. I, I right. mean, I seldom have a bad show in Flint. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, well that's kind of my background. Right. You know, it's kind of industrial, a little bit older. Yeah. I have a joke that I do about my wife being a flat earther. And the couple times I've done it that were really bad, I'll, 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 I'll do the, the setup for the joke and I'll hear someone in the audience say, like loud enough where I can hear them say, what's a flat earther? So at that point, you know, it's not <laughs> yeah, going to work. It's, it's not, not going to chill. No, yeah. no. You know, my first set ever was down at the Ann Arbor uh, Showcase. Oh, it was? Yeah, at the old one. That's where I did my first open mic before I ever took a comedy lesson or anything. Wow, what year? Like, like 2010-ish? Or? I'll tell you. Let's see. Uh, no, no. Uh, 2014. Oh, okay. First time I ever did it, I, I um, had just written my book and I was lecturing on my book and I was had done some lectures on my book and I was running out of people to talk to and I was thinking, you know, I was blogging about my stuff in my book, which yeah. is on parenting. And I thought, I enjoy doing this, but who am I going to talk to? I'm running out of people to talk to. And I like standing up front and presenting things. And, and so I decided to do this so i i just looked up online who has an open mic and i found one in ann arbor so i went down to do it how'd it go uh surprisingly well for the lousy material i had i mean i had been collecting things that i thought were funny for many 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 years and uh, actually those books up there on the far right are filled with 
all kinds of notes of when I was a salesman on the road and things that I thought were funny that I ran into. And uh, when I decided to do this, I hadn't written any comedy. They said, come do it. And so I had like three days to write some jokes. And I think, I can't remember, I think we did five minutes, I'm going to say. Yeah. Something like that. And uh, the pe- when I came off, people said, I can't believe that's your first time. That you've never been up before. But I think that was more about the fact I wasn't nervous. But see, I had That's done- what a lot of people associate with you being comfortable as being good. And it usually does help. I mean, you, you know, if yeah, you're- Yeah, well, you, you got to get over that. Yeah, right, If you're super comfortable and appear to be super comfortable, even if you're not killing it joke-wise, people think, wow, this guy's really good because he just seems really comfortable. Yeah. But yeah. You, you, you reminded me something a second ago of a story you told me. You said you were on your book tour or whatever it was. You told me about a, um, and I don't want to give too much of it away. I want you to tell people because there's kind of a punchline to it where you had to go do a book signing at seven o'clock. Do you remember that one? Oh, I had to do a book presentation right. at, uh, uh, no, it was at six o'clock. Oh, was it was at six o'clock. Yeah. I had to do it. They asked me to, and I, even that's kind of early for a comedy show or, or, or a presentation. You would think it'd be later. Yeah. Right. Egg, well, it, it I know was, open mics don't start till nine, sometimes 10, yeah, sometimes. So yeah. six o'clock is pretty early. Well, uh, yes. And because I'm stupid. Right. I messed that up. What do you mean? <laughs> You barely you want me to tell the story, don't you? Well, you could, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. okay. I was I was lecturing to different people on uh, parenting, right? Because I wrote a book on parenting, parenting yeah. toddlers, and there was a local preschool uh, uh, place, and I went in and talked to the owner of it or the supervisor of it, and I was going to come in and talk to uh, her parents, yeah. that dropped off kids there or whatever, and I said, sure, set up a time or whatever, and she said six o'clock on this time or whatever, yeah this day and i have you know i have all i have things to give away i have books i take yeah, i have you set up your backdrop, whole table and I, shit. yeah and right. i do a powerpoint presentation yeah. it was like you a formal ready. Pres- yeah yeah it's a formal thing and i think okay so um i'm gonna go up there and make the do the presentation and she said you gotta be, get there like an hour early probably right well, a little bit she yeah. said we're gonna have our meeting ahead of time but yeah. i'll give you a little time to set up so i figure if i get there 5 30 or right or quarter to six, I'll be good. And I get all ready and I go up there to make the presentation and, and the door's locked. Nobody's there. What, what do think, you mean? Well, I got it. I don't know. That's what I thought. I'm knocking on the door, ringing the what bell. What time was that at? I was, I was like quarter to six or hmm. 20 to six or I, you know, those are well enough to it's set up good, my stuff. That's not, ready. A, that's not a good sign. No, it? it was a bad sign. I thought I was kind of looking forward to making this presentation. Right. And, uh, um, did you have the right day? I did have the right day. I was on the exact right day. I double checked that. You know, you kind of worry about that. Right. So I contacted the the lady. I had I texted her or sent her a message, and she responded. And I said I got there. I, I, and actually, while I was there, I was like, "I'm here. Where are you?" And then right. nothing. Yeah. And I got a text back. And apparently, that the meeting was at six a.m. <laughs> What? Not 6 p.m. 6 a.m.? 6 a.m. Holy shit. She wanted a presentation. It said, oh. said, I'll see you on this day at 6. Oh. You should have to say a.m. If you're going to fucking meet somebody at 6 a.m., you need to say a.m. I agree. Jesus Christ. I would have never thought it was 6 a.m. So anyway, that's pretty crazy. Well, yeah, you know what? And I felt like an asshole because I did. Yeah. And I apologized to the lady. And she was uh, as indignant a word. <laughs> She was very aloof and very uh, kind of nasty about oh, it. Really? And I was like, not professional in that. I can't believe that you would show she up here at 6 She never once thought that her not saying AM was her problem or her fault? I don't know. I guess in her world that that 6 o'clock in the morning is, is like a normal time. Well, and she, I, it's not that I haven't done presentations that early when I was working, but it was really rare. Usually they'd be 7 a.m. because work would start at 8 or 9, so you do it right prior to work. But 6 a.m., was yeah. she a redhead, Ted? Because it almost seems like she was deceptive. You know, she did wear a muumu. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? That was just about the end of my uh, lecturing on books right. time. Yeah. Anyhow, I was pretty much fed up with it because turns out, you know, good parents don't need you and bad parents aren't showing up. Right. Yeah, so, that's I mean, true. That's true. I went down and talked to a, a men's group that was all about uh, parenting in Detroit, and they have an annual group. And it was rare, but... Uh, when I was a single parent, uh, it was rare for men to be single parents. And I did back in the eighties. Right. And so no, they had the, this, the moms always get the kids. You yeah, know yeah. 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 And so they had this group of men that get together and kind of support each other about trying to have custody of their kids or enough time with their kids or whatever. And I was going to go down and talk to them. And so when I set up and started my presentation, I, uh, 
started out saying, it doesn't matter how much time you have with your kids if you aren't a good parent. And making the assumption that just because you have a kid, you're a good parent is probably a misguided thought because it takes some understanding, takes some training, takes some practice to actually get good at it. But if you're going to go into the court and represent the fact that you think you should be sole custody or have sole custody or be the primary caretaker of these kids, maybe you should know something about taking care of little kids. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to toddlers, little kids in diapers that need potty training and all Especially these. Especially as a man. I mean, yeah. You know. And it'd be nice if you could impress the judge by knowing a few things. And I'm here to give you a couple tips on taking care of kids and, mm -hmm. and what a good quality parent uh, might want to know yeah. or might be concerned about. And they were not interested in the slightest mm. matter of fact, they were, uh, they were insulted with the thought that they weren't automatically good parents because mm -hmm. they had fought this battle and told themselves this so much because they want custody of their kids because their wife does drugs. And I, so I'm going to be a good parent. And I'm thinking there's more to it than wanting to be yeah. a good parent that, it, you know, and, and I've, you know, had this many kids over All this many years. All you're looking to do is and, give them ammunition so they can Yeah, but succeed. They, they're, you know what? That's the problem with most people. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about comedy, if you're talking about parenting, if you're talking about business. People do not want to be told there might be a better way to do anything that they're doing. People, their egos are so attached. And you had a son, I know, that was a really good golfer. Mm -hmm. And I had a daughter that was a really good golfer. But have, yes. Yeah, well, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, still do. <laughs> yeah, but the, the point is, the only reason she was really good and your son was really good, there's three things. They have to have some talent for it. Then they have to be diligent at working at it. They have to have the drive like nobody's drive mm -hmm. to just work when other people aren't working. But they also have to have the humility to know they can always be better. Yeah. And you can only be better when you determine what area you can improve. So you have to take a skeptical look at what you're doing and saying, even though I'm almost shooting power every time, you know, my chipping is not as good as it could be. So you have to be critical of things that are pretty good, but might be better. And those are the kind of people that rise to the top. And I don't care if you're talking about parenting or golf or in life or business. And if your ego is such that you can't tolerate criticism, I'm not saying criticism is always polite or fun or nice or right. easy, but if you can't tolerate it, you aren't getting any better. And even if you're really good at something, like I was a pretty good salesperson, but the environment changes, customers change, oh, yeah. needs change. And so you have to get better at everything all the time. Otherwise you're getting worse because the competition's going to get better. The environment's going to change. You aren't going to be as successful. So everything you do, you have to find ways to get better. But yeah. my problem at, at that meeting was their egos are no, so we big. Yeah. No. No, we're fine. What are you talking about? And yeah. I had lawyers stand up and criticize what I was saying because I was saying these guys should think about, you know, the quality of their parenting and what, what are they going to do when they have the kids? You know, what, what kind of things are you going to tell the judge that you're able to do or you're willing to do? Or what are your goals? What environment are you trying to, you know, provide? Right. Well, how are you going to get better? Well, where, where's what are the you going to do with the kids when you're home every night? What is your plan? What do yeah. you, you know? Yeah. I mean, it isn't just sticking food in front of them and telling them to go to bed. You're nurturing, you're, you're, you know, raising a person to release them into the environment, to be an independent, smart, confident person. And there's a whole lot of things you got to learn to do. But in any case, yep. uh, my public speaking was not always well received and sometimes oh, wow. not heard at all, but it, it was a fun experience. I, I enjoyed yeah. it. I'm glad I did it. The book's out there. It's called look out. I'm parenting here. A survival guide for a single or busy parent. We found on Amazon ebook copies are only 99 cents. I'm giving it away. Uh, hard copies. You got to pay for the hard copies. So they're like $17 or, I mean, a hardback's like 27, I think. Paperbacks are 17 or something like that. But in any case, uh, it's on Amazon too. You can it is on Amazon, amazon.com. You can look up Ted Moss three, or you can look up uh look out. I'm parenting here. So there's a plug mm. for me. Thank you, Ron. Cool. You're welcome. I love being on your podcast. Sure. I get to plug my Glad shit. You can make it. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to plug before we get out of here? <laughs> no, nope, you got really. anything coming up? No. Nope. You got any websites? Nothing great. No, yeah. You want to talk great. about any girlfriends on the side or anything that your wife doesn't know about that we can put out mm. there in the public? 
we could talk about one. I've dated this girl that was a redhead. No. In a moo moo. Right. No. Uh, you know, you must be, you must have married right. Cause I tell you what, you spend more time away from your wife than most people. Well, that's the thing. Like I was a huge golfer for years and years and people would always say, how do you fucking get away to golf? Golf is like five hours to get away. And my wife was the type where she would be like, please tell me you're golfing today. Yeah. That's how she was. And that's how she still is. <laughs> is that a joke or is that true? No, that's the honest to God truth. And even now when I, now I don't, I don't golf as much, but I'm still in a couple, like a league or whatever. Yeah. And like, when the league ends, she's like depressed. She's like, you're not golfing anymore on Tuesday nights. I said, no, it's over. She's like, well, fuck, it's, it's warm out. You can still go yeah. and play, you know, but yeah, that's. Hey, I was thinking about having a golf outing this, this summer yeah. uh, for uh, comedians. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went golfing with Sal D'Amelio, uh, Billy Ray uh, Bauer, and yeah. there's a number of comedians that golf. I think Norm Stoltz is a golfer sure. too. Yeah. 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 But I was thinking maybe I'd put something together, put it out there uh, in the comedy network. If you're in Michigan, there's a Michigan comic network. MCN, M yeah. MCN mm -hmm. with uh, all the local stuff on comedy. So if you want to come up to Michigan and do comedy, that you should look up MCN. And uh, but in any case, I thought it'd be fun just to have a social gathering. You should put something on there, Tattoo, about selling jokes. You should just put something. You're any, fucking any, out of your mind, dude. Why? You think people are going to buy my jokes? Why wouldn't I, you they? No, actually, I did have an offer for Finder Chatter Caller. Did I ever yeah, tell you that? Yeah, you did tell me that, but why yeah, wouldn't you? Not know? very much money, though. Not enough to well, sell it. So. Well, if you sold it, does that mean you can never use it again? Can I rent it? Can That's you what rent I'm out a job? <laughs> Borrow it. Let's, you know, can I rent uh, out Carlin's bits? <laughs> Maybe. Who do I contact? Who has the rights? Let me ask you this. If yeah. you, out of all the comedians you know, yes. who would be best suited to buy one of your jokes? Because it. It, there is an issue with, you know, the, the, the I do style. have a style. style I do have yeah. a style. Well, yeah. you know what? I think, I think most people would not be comfortable doing my style. Yeah. And uh, as you know, within my style of comedy, I do a lot of, I don't want to call it wordplay, but I, I have a lot of. Well, uh, it's, so it's a type, certain amount of like wordsmith that you yes. do. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's not like rapping, but it kind of is in yeah. comedy. There's, right. there's, there's that element to mm -hmm. it. And so it's pretty precise. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean it's precisely funny, but no. it is what it is. Yeah. Um, it's I would, funny. I would think, who could do my stuff? Um, I actually think Chris Lazar could do my stuff. Yeah. I actually think he could. But you almost have to be the character. You almost have to be the guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's more of a, there aren't a guy, There aren't a lot of guys that go on stage and do characters like you. Like you did. Mike Green is, in my opinion, great, great at, uh, at a character that yes. he is on stage that yeah. he's really not. Like most people that right. are on stage, when they get off stage, they're pretty similar to what yeah. they were like me. Yeah. I'm not, I'm yeah, really yeah, not yeah, yeah. fucking different. Well, Mike you know? Green is like a 14-year-old boy. Mike Green is hilarious. And, and he's, that, he's that great character he does is, yeah. is in, yeah. uh, incredible. Yeah. 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 Well, it's it's... And now he doesn't come out and say, I'm a 14 year old boy, but no, he does no. all his voice is from a perception of what you would be thinking yeah. if you were a 14 his year old boy. His character is basically his voice, the embodiment yeah. of innocence is what he yes. is up there. Right. And when you're innocent on stage like that, people love you because you're so right. vulnerable and so innocent right. and you made a mistake and you did something that made you look funny and people just love that shit. And Mike is like the expert at it in my yeah. opinion. And my yeah. character isn't like that at all. No, but it's still a character and that's, that's cool too. I mean, uh, cause there aren't a lot of people doing characters and you're, well, you know. I, I didn't do it on purpose. I actually, I remember, uh, Matt Bach one time said, yeah. Why are you doing that voice? Right. And I'm like, what voice? What voice? <laughs> <laughs> Why, Matt, what voice are you talking about? Uh, right. <laughs> did the name of Ruben the Bone, you right. struck Matt, up a name. I have no what idea, voice, huh? Matt, what you what are referring to. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something Speedway. Yeah. Wild Wednesday. All right. Yeah. Um, I, you know what? I'm not even sure why I do that. Quite no. frankly, it, it's almost a second. I think it, I've seen you enough where I think it happens. It just, it happens to you. And it <sighs> I just know. Like takes and well, over. you know, and I, I've tried to fight it even, and I don't do well fighting it because I fall into it. Yeah. And, and I think it has a ring of insincerity to it. And I think it's the limiting factor in my comedy. And, and I, I don't know how to not do it. Right. right. It's kind of like the opening of this show. Yeah. You know, there's just a. It's just kind of what I do. Right. And uh, I, I'm not sure I haven't always been that guy. 
that if you'd say, go, Ted, I'm going to go, all right, right, here we go. This is what we're well, going to, and that's what I do. You and I talked about it before the podcast, how Jim Carrey and, and maybe Robin Williams was the most famous at it. When he went on to a late night talk show, you couldn't just sit down and say, hey, Robin, uh, how's, you know, how's, how's your life going? How are the wife right, and kids? Right, right. No, he would be that insane yes. person that right. he is on stage, yeah. even when he's sitting down. Yeah. Where I don't think you would be that way. You, 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 know, you, can, you can dissociate from the guy on stage, like Mike Green as well. Yeah. But Robin Williams, even Jim Carrey like that. But then again, maybe they thought they don't want to see the real me. They want, they want funny well, Robin you know, Williams. I've seen Jim, Jim Carrey give a commencement speech where he was pretty normal. Yeah. And so I think he can pop in and out. Oh, he does. More than Robin Williams did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think Robin ever yeah. did. I think Robin was always an actor. Yeah. He was always playing a role. He was yeah. always saying somebody else's words. And, but it's, he started in stand-up comedy, and that's the guy he was on stage. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, I think at some level, you're limited in who you can be and what character you can play and what voice you have on stage. Right. I don't always stay in that character, I don't think. But I think there's a... On stage, you mean? I mean, the character I, you see me on stage, yep. when you see me in person... Oh, no, you're not at all. But I think I pop into it once in a while. Only if, if something funny happens, I think, I go, oh, I can't believe this, and all of a sudden well, I'll yeah, say something yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 but that's what you're, you're intending to do. You, you want people to see that, well, I'm, I'm going to do something funny here, and that's what you're doing. Yeah. Because that's what you associate with being funny, maybe, you know? Yeah, well, when I see something funny, that's the voice in my head yeah. that, that I hear. We also talked about Seth MacFarlane, and, and, and you're like that with him, where he, you know, you were talking about you can do your own commercials where you can be, hey, yeah, yeah. and yes. Seth MacFarlane, I've saw, seen him interviewed a few times, and he, you know, the, 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 all the, the, the characters he does, he, he said his dad was a 50s, like, um, ad man. Yeah. And he loved oh, that. I can see that, you know, yes. Yeah, yeah. Joe's Motor Oil, you know, come yeah, by yeah. and get a kid a can of our... And that's where all of his voices yes. come from, yeah. you know? Yeah, maybe, I, you know what, I don't know how to use it, though. I mean, and I don't know that, you know, he's great. Yeah. But I'm okay. But I've always thought that's my limiting factor. That it's hard for me. I think the audience likes you if you're sincere. And it's hard for me to come across as sincere. Now, I've had shows like the, the contest I won, won up in uh, Frankenmuth. Yeah. And I'm proud of that. Yeah. But the audience was with me. I said, here's the ride we're going on. Dude. Right. And everybody said, let's go. Do it. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. And I did my bit, and they roared through the whole thing, and I had a great set. Those are great nights, man. I actually, that was, you know what, probably the biggest compliment I've ever had from anybody in comedy. Tim Finkel came up to me backstage because he was on that show, too. Mm -hmm. And he said, dude, I was backstage. I was rehearsing, and they were roaring so loud, I had to come out and see what was going on. Wow. He said, you had three applause breaks and one wahoo break. Damn. Said, I've never heard anybody in 12 minutes have three applause breaks and a wahoo, and a wahoo break. wahoo break. Honestly, they started just screaming wow. where I had to just stop and tell. That's awesome. And in my head, I'm thinking, I'm not that funny. Wow. I've said all this shit before. And it's not that funny. But we were all along for the ride at that point. You know and, what I mean? And nights like that are a double-edged sword because they're so amazing. You're like, you're so fucking high. And then you go and do another show. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck has <laughs> happened? <laughs> the same job. And your everything is at that standard now because you you had such a great I know, night. I know. You, now you're going to Joe's bar where they're watching TV. They're not even listening to you. Yeah. And you're just now you just get slammed back down to yeah. earth, and it's it's yeah. it's frustrating. Yeah, it know? is. You know, it's even worse when they're listening to you and not laughing. When well, the TVs are worse. off, yeah, when they're paying worse. attention, they're right. looking right at you, yeah, that's bad. and nothing's happening. Yeah. You know, that's where you that, tap on the mic and you're yeah, like, that's like, on? Yeah, you know? it's like, yeah, yeah you're having sex with a lady and she's looking at you and she's not I did a show doing nothing, over just the looking weekend. at you and going like, yeah, <laughs> and now what? I did a show over the weekend <laughs> in Battle Creek with a, a, a good audience, like 400 people, you know? Yeah, long ways to Battle Creek. Yeah, that's long a couple ways, hours. Right. Yeah. And I do the same opener all the time about, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, match.com, you yes. know? Yes, and you're hilarious. I well, love your set, well, dude. And you and have and a lot of good stuff. And at the end of that joke, I tell people that I was just opening with that because it's funny and when i did that night i said i just opened with that joke because it's um usually funny 
<laughs> because they didn't really find it that way. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's like, oh, fuck. You know, and yeah. what sucks is when you know you're, you're usually open with something good. That's what you feel. That's yeah, like a yeah, really yeah. good joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't go over well. You're like, God damn it. Yeah. So they're not getting my one of my best yeah. fucking jokes. Yeah. But sometimes it's because they're not listening. They're, they're settling in. They're, yeah. they're talking to their friends. That They're still on their phones, you know. So that's when you got to just pile through and go to your next one and hope that they're going right. to listen for it, you know, yeah. because you know what's good. You've done it a lot of times. Yeah. I know people laugh at this, but they didn't that night because they were doing something right. else. They were right. still getting ready, you know. We always had those solid go-tos. But I got to tell you, when I was doing that show at Big Tommy's and opening for Billy, who was yeah. going to record it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Abby had a set that was, uh, she struggled. And was Abby, she the like opener? Yeah, she was the yeah, host. Yeah. yeah, she opened. I featured in Billy, you know, right, headline. Right. So, yep. uh, and and I mean, she won the LA Express competition. Abby is, is fucking she fucking hilarious with the right so, audience? But yeah, she's a character. You yeah. got to buy into yeah. this kind of evil. Yes, I mean, she's yeah, like but uh, she's great. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ninety-eight percent of audiences, I think she does do well. Oh you know? yeah, yeah. She's a who's the little doll that kills people in the horror flicks? So. Chucky. Yeah, she's like yeah. sister of Chucky. Right, right, right. She right, does yeah, it because yeah, she's yeah. got this evil yeah, laugh. That, that laugh is yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is great. Yeah. She has great material too. But yeah. you got to kind of go along for the ride. Yeah. Well, in any case. With this crowd, she struggled a little bit, yeah. and which isn't good because they're going to record this for Billy. Yeah, and but she did her thing. She she got some laughs, but it wasn't her best set. Right, and I've yeah. seen her just killed. So, oh yeah, yeah. No offense to her, she just yeah. it wasn't a good night for her. And I got up, I was struggling too, mm-hmm. and it was one of those things where you would normally just power through. And I stopped, and I talked to the audience. I said, "Look it, if you're waiting for something better, right, this is it." Yeah. Ah, this is what I do. <laughs> yeah, this is, and actually, uh, Chris Lazar even mentioned that because he was in the audience, he said, that's when you broke them. That's when they broke through. Yeah. It's just stopped and talked to him, said, you know, this is the comedy. Right. If yeah. you came for something else, you're, you're going to be waiting, waiting a long time. Something, there's but, nothing yeah. else happening right. but this. Yeah. This is as funny as I get. This is yeah, what I this got. Is the, this is the, this the, is the appetizer, story. the entree, and dessert you're looking at right here. <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah. getting funnier as you go. Right. You can right. wait, but. But they dug that. They actually laughed at that. Yeah. They thought that was funny that I kind of broke. And in my mind, I thought they saw me as reciting a story or a poem to him and not talking to him. And taking that break yeah. actually said, look, it, I'm going to talk to you because right. we're all in the same room. I can hear you and I can hear that you're not laughing and you can hear me. This is a real thing here. This isn't like you aren't watching TV. Right. It's an interactive thing. And when I did, for whatever reason, and I don't know why, I don't know the psychology of it, then they started laughing. And then the rest of my set was really good. Yeah. And actually, I because I wanted to close strong, I did close with my finder chatter caller. Thing, yeah. Which is like a two and a half minute bit. And it it seldom fails. No. And right. I wanted, I didn't want to be the star, but I wanted them to be in a good mood and laughing yeah. when Billy came up because, you know, he's going to sell this thing. Right. And that did okay. But the point of the story is, that sometimes when you have one of those sets, they're listening to you. They just aren't with you for yeah. whatever reason. And somehow you got to get them on board. Yeah. And stopping and talking to them was the thing to do. Yeah. And I saw Dave Landau open one time and he's a, you know, he's not, he's a little bluish, you know, but he came out and did something right out of the gate and everybody kind of went, Oh geez. And it was funny. Cause he just fucking stopped and went, well, what he goes, uh, it's just going to get fucking worse or whatever, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, and yeah. they, and they love yeah. that. And all yes. of a sudden, boom, they were all on board. Yes. Same thing, you know, yes. it's like, yeah, instead of like, you got to acknowledge that something, yes. you have to acknowledge what's happening and yes. go, what well, if fuck? you're good, you will. Yeah. And you know, actually, um, that's one of the things that's great about Josh Adams that he comes on and he talks about the room. He talks about what's go- going on in the room people are walking through or what's not hanging on the wall. That's really cool. Yeah, I can't do, I'm, I'm like a fucking scripted motherfucker when I'm up there, man. Well, so I got, am I, I'm not but, good but at that. Yet. That conversation he has is a lot like me stopping and talking yeah, about yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. That you, they know you're in the moment with them and somehow that breaks down a barrier yeah. and I don't get it. I don't know why it's true. Martez Jackson is really good at that too. I've done, I've been, I, at, I, I don't know him. I've been at big times with him a lot. Where is he local? He's local and he, I've seen him headline there. I've seen him feature there and I've, he's open for me there and oh. he'll, he'll, cause you know, when you open a big time is you can do 20 minutes, 25 minutes sometimes, yeah. you know, so he'll go there and it'll be an ice cold fucking crowd. No one's listening. They're eating Yeah, and he'll just go up there and Dinner for show. the first five minutes, he'll be like, fuck I, this is, you know, and he'll just talk he'll, he, I, cause I know his bit. He's not doing his bit. He's just talking and telling people what's going to happen or what. And I, 
I'm not great at that. And, and yeah, I, it's always something I envy. Well, you're less scripted than I am. And, and truth be told, we got together one time and we talked about doing a two man bit. Yep. Yep. And I am so scripted and you're more a little bit loose about, ah, it's got to be a little bit more conversational. I think, I think we never got back together. We kind of had one meeting and it was kind of like kind of rough. And right. I, I think we both could see. I just felt reason. that we weren't meshing as well as two people that need, if you're going to do a, a double act, they need to really have, right. be on the same page. I know? think so too. I, yeah. I totally agree. And right. we both thought that. Right. Right. But I, I mean, kind of like the date, like, yeah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I think I was the redhead in that scenario. <laughs> no, no, I think, no, I think you thought the same thing. I thought uh, that, yeah. well, I don't know why this isn't working, but right. it's not working that well. Yeah. Now recently, because I just bought two new guitars, I thought I would love to do a kind of like a, Smothers Brothers thing. Yeah. I could be the guitar player and the other pe- person could just talk. I think that would be fun. Mm-hmm. But I think doing a two man bit would be fun with anybody. But you got to have something. I think it'd that be would fun too, Ted. But the problem with it is, is you got to practice that shit. That's a lot. You know, there's time involved. So you got to get somebody that's willing to spend the, you know, quality time with the two man group as yeah. well as if they're doing comedy on their own. So it's a big, it's a plateful. It is. I, I, I it think. is. Yeah. I, I totally agree. But I also think that if you're going to be big in comedy, you got to do something that makes you stand out. Yeah. Cause there's no one's doing it. Yeah. Yeah. No one's doing it. I, I, I love the idea. The, the idea. That's why I agreed to let, at least look into it. Yeah. And when you think of the Smothers Brothers, my favorite group in history are Abbott and Costello. Yeah. I love as a kid, loved them. I still, you know, I watched all their movies. I loved any any stand up they did. They would roast shows and stuff, and they were they were great. So that's why I was on board. But you got to be two personalities that are very good for each other. You know? I agree. I agree. And and I don't know how you find that. I'm not sure how you develop that. I'm not sure how you write for that. That's difficult. Yeah. I, do you okay, know, I wonder how they got together. You know? Yeah. You know, uh, Lewis and Martin, when they first got together, was all ad lib. Both of them were just like yeah. riffing, basically. They were yeah. Just, yeah. They were just somehow thrown together at the show and they were just kind of talking. And yeah. and same as the Rat Pack, when they got together and started yeah. doing things, it was all ad lib. But the other funny thing is that. My understanding is when you have a straight man and a funny man, because it often ends up being that yeah. one setting up yeah, the other yeah, guy, yeah. that the funny man gets paid less than the straight man. I would think they just split everything, wouldn't yeah. they? No? No. Historically, I believe, and I can't remember where I learned this, hmm. that the straight man who doesn't get the recognition and the fame. Makes up for it with a little more cash. Yeah. He's wow. like 60%. The other guy gets 40%. Wow. That it's not not a 50-50 deal. Now, I don't know why. Maybe, and maybe that's they, not true, but well, I that, think I've heard that That could someplace. be exactly why, because the, when you walk up to the Smothers Brothers, everybody's walking up to... Tommy? The funny one. Is it Was Tommy the funny one? I think one? Tommy is the funny one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dick is the other one. Yeah. I, yeah. I, the, one, uh, the one that acted like he was low IQ... Tommy. Was the funny one. Was that Tommy? Tommy? Yeah. I, yeah. And you know the other thing, Ted, about... Notice I didn't say retarded. Right. <laughs> really like that. That. <laughs> it's a lot of times they are siblings because they, they're so comfortable with each other. Sometimes they're even twins, right? The two black guys are twins. There's two white guys that are twins that are comedy acts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because the same thing they said about singers. No one can harmonize yeah. like siblings. Yeah. You know, and it's... Uh, Probably some. Who did Wake Up Little Susie, the brothers? Uh, Wake Up Little Susie. Were they the Everly brothers? Yeah. Everly? Were they Everly? Everly? Maybe? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They had, yeah, yeah. They had great voices together. Because they're almost the same, but they're not quite the same. Yeah. You know, uh, actually, they double voices. I don't know if you know this, but singers actually double their voice. Oh. Well, so my son, when he used to be a singer, uh, he would... Uh, sing a bunch of tracks and play them over No, no, other. no. He'd oh. just sing once. Oh. But then they'd take another track of the exact same thing, put it together with the other one, and put it just, in the same key and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And just put it off just a tad. So you can tell there's two. Oh, so it's just a wow. little bit off. So it's doubling. Um, but some people got to the point where they were like tripling and quadding their voice wow. and you listen to it. Go, that's just too much. Yeah. That's too much. So doubling your voice is not unusual thing. My mom sang on the radio with her two sisters, like almost like the Andrew sisters. There really? were three of them. Yeah. Yeah. They used oh, to that's do, pretty cool. they would do USO shows and they would really? do jingles on commercials. Yeah. And then <laughs> for years, for, for 40 years, they sang at every Christmas party together. Really? They would do all the songs. Yeah. Yeah. It was, 
Pretty did they cool. travel around and do this? But they traveled to USO shows with their mother. She put on shows and stuff, yeah. Wow, did they ever come up to Flint to do the show in Flint? They might have. I'll ask her sometime. They're all three still alive. Wow. You know, you know back in the day uh, during... God, my dad used to tell me about this because he was in World War II. But mm-hmm. back in the day, post-World War II, uh, the big band era. Yeah. Uh, when all these guys jitterbugged and loved mm-hmm. to dance, and that was what you did. Yeah. And they had the big band shows where big band would oh, come yeah. in. They would have big auditoriums where people come in. You'd have to have a big wooden dance floor, you know, whether it's a roller rink or an auditorium. Right. So all these, or gymnasium, where all these people could dance. Jitterbug, yeah. 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 And so he used to go down to what was called the IMA in Flint, and they used mm-hmm. to set it up for, I don't know if it was a weekly or a monthly dance, but they had a lot of dances down there. Wow. And they had this big uh, mirror ball. Ball they used to put up like a disco ball type yeah, like thing? a disco yeah. ball yeah. put the sparklies around right. the room while yeah. they're out there dancing and stuff the big band's coming in yeah and week after week they'd have to put that ball up and they'd have to take that ball down really they didn't just leave it up no no for some reason they'd put it up and i made didn't want up there all the time uh, who knows maybe they're playing basketball and right. get hit or i have no idea why but he said they you know they did this over and over and that they finally got to a point and he was in the junior chamber of commerce so they were the young and upcomers <laughs> business kids or right whatever. right he said they got to the point they got tired of putting it up and taking it down. So uh, him and his buddies were taking it down one day, and they just kind of looked at each other, and they dropped the ball. Oh, <laughs> that's it. We're done with it. I think it fucking shattered. shattered I yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about dropping the ball. I wonder if that's where that same skin came from. Yeah, we exa- dropped the ball. I know. I don't know. That's pretty good. I thought that was a sex thing. I dropped the Is ball. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that was a song, wasn't it? I dropped the ball on you. No, that was no you bomb. You dropped the bomb on me, baby. Yeah, the bomb. <laughs> baby. Not no. the ball. You no. dropped the bomb on me. <laughs> All right. Are we done? Yeah, we got to be I done, guess. dude. Yeah, we could probably wrap we are it gonna up. Be, this is, we only can be so entertaining for so yeah. long. Yeah, you're going to have to cut. At some like, point, we're just old to, white men talking about you're shit. You're going to have to edit like 70% of I this. I know. Like, good God. It's I can't believe just, we talked about that. This was just rambling. Hey, thanks for coming in. Oh, I'm glad I could finally get out here. No, I want you to come in and do this again sometime. Oh, well, yeah, it's not like it we can uh, talk about a lot of shit. I'm not sure anybody will ever want to listen to it, but Doesn't it's, matter. it's this is for this isn't for other people. This is for us. This is for, for our us. personal collection. Right. I know you'll be That's listening it. to this with your headphones yeah. on. Your wife will be going. Yeah. God, I'm glad Jesus he's not bugging Christ, me. I'm glad this isn't in the, <laughs> on the flowing through the open air where I have to listen to it. <laughs> Thank God it's not radio. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> hey, but thanks for coming in. I'm glad you uh, you made the trip out, and I appreciate that. It's always good talking to you. Great to be here. I mean, I do have one little, it's not more than 20 seconds. I've got a story about a podcast. I was doing a show early on, you know, a, a, a feature, I mean, a, a showcase show with people. Why do I find this not surprising you have one more story? Just one more story. <laughs> and I'm with all these young people that you talked about earlier, yeah. the 23 year olds. Sure. And we're off in the corner getting ready to go up. Somebody right. else, and the one guy, they're talking and talking and talking. And one guy says, Ron, what's your favorite podcast? And I'm like, I'd never fucking heard of a podcast before. So I'm like, you know what, Jim? I got to take a leak. I'll be right back. I went in the bathroom. I got on my phone and I'm looking at podcasts and figuring out what they are. And then I, I, I wrote like favorite podcasts and Drew and Mike were on one and it came up Drew and Mike. So when I walked back out, I'm like, you know what? I think Drew and Mike are my, and they're like, oh, that's a fucking good one. That's a really good. I had no idea. This was probably five years ago, but I had no idea what a podcast was. So. I think it's hilarious that you wanted to come up with an answer. Yeah. I, instead I, of just going, I don't know. Right. I, What's I, that? I felt like I was the old guy, so I didn't want well, to be you like. you were the old guy. Well, I know, but I didn't want to <laughs> cement it. <laughs> You know, be like, what's that? Yeah. And they'd all go, oh, sorry, we didn't realize this is, you were this that This is what happens old. to you when you get old. You're trying to hide the fact you're old. Yes. And when I was young, I always thought it'd be fun to be old because I could be the old pervert man and I could yeah. tap girls on the butt and not get yeah. in trouble when I was that I never saw, happened. I saw Kara Karachi the other night at uh, Big Time. She came up to me, she goes, well, Hi. I said, she tap said, in the butt and this brought up Kara. Well, no, no. She goes, hi, Grandpa. Oh, no. That's what she said to me. God uh, damn it, Kara. But yeah, no, that's, I mean, you know, we're older. You know, that's the way Send it is. Send her a dick pic, dude. No, I'm not no, doing that. don't do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't want anyone to see my dick. Well, it doesn't have to be yours. Dude, <laughs> oh, haven't you learned true. this? That's true. I haven't thought of that. <laughs> yeah, Keep Google, forgetting about the redhead. Google head. dick. Keep forgetting about the redhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can put oh, any shit. dick out there you want. Yeah, she's nice. Actually, she's the one that bought me the cup you're drinking out of. Oh, that's nice. What does it say? Let's see. I'm a ray of fucking sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. I like her a lot. She actually just sent me a reference. She said, uh, 
I think Billy Ray Bauer is going out on the East Coast and looking for somebody that was available to travel. I saw that, yeah. And open for him. Yeah. And she sent it to me. She said, Ted, you should do this. You right. really should do this. Yeah, you would have been a great candidate for well, that. Well, thank you. That's nice of you to say. Yeah. I don't think I'm that fucking funny. But well. uh, she, I think that's nice. I And you know what? I have always really kind of enjoyed not mentoring as much as sharing what I think with new comedians, mm -hmm. um, uh, young men, young women, people that are new, that are interested right. in getting better. I, I enjoy saying, you know, it's a community. These are the things you should be aware of. Yeah. Here's some etiquette things. Mentoring. Yeah. Well, I hate to say mentoring because it sounds like I think, uh, I know a lot and I, and, and I, I know a little bit more than them, but I love kind of introducing them to things that I know and that I think are good or have worked for me. I think, I think too many people in my life have been very protective of knowledge, especially in business. People don't want you to know. No, and, that's and always it, that way in business. And I, I think that's unfortunate because especially in comedy, I don't think it's competition. No. It's like, you know, if you start a podcast, I'm going to come on your podcast and, and be the best guest I can. Right. I want your podcast to be successful, successful. And I don't think it takes away from mine. No. And I think comedy is the same thing. If you feel that way, you're skewed. Yeah. yeah. yeah at least that's what I think. If you feel that so. in order for you to be better, this guy can't be funny, then you have an issue. Yeah. You know, you have Besides, I think, you know, um, Kara is one person who might at some point run into a lady that I can date. Oh, that's true. <laughs> you never know, man. She could be so, your wingman. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Help me out, Kara. <laughs> All mm, right. Yeah, we should probably wrap All up. All right. Thanks a lot for coming in, Ron Rigby. You're welcome. See him everywhere Thanks all the time. Mark Ridley's this weekend, but you know what? This will probably air in like five months. And you months, finally so. hit the damn court, oh, dude. Sorry, I told you yeah. not to do that. So, yeah, Mark yeah. Ridley's this weekend. You're doing the yeah. weekend at Ridley's? You're yeah. hosting? You're featuring? Yeah. What are you hosting. doing? Hosting. Hosting. That's big time. Yeah. Good for you. It was supposed to be for, like, the, the headliner was supposed to be Finesse Mitchell, which would have been great because yeah. he's a Saturday Night Live guy. He was there for like yeah. four years. But he must have backed out because I went on to um, web, Ridley's website of couple weeks ago and it's somebody else now so he must have had uh, yeah an issue where he couldn't you know well, i think that's great have fun at R ridley's you know Thanks. when i grow up i want to be you well yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> just you before they have, throw me in a shredder you have better goals <laughs> <laughs> all right we're getting out of here regardless of what he has to say thanks for tuning in thanks to my guest ron rigby for being here thanks a for having me a man who has a name for comedy mr ron rigby thanks we're out folks See ya! All right, we're getting out of here. That was Mr. Ron Rigby. Wasn't he great? He is always a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And thanks a lot for sticking around all the way to the end. And remember, if you subscribe, you'll never miss a show. It doesn't cost anything to do that. And so you know, the new rule is, if you laughed out loud at least one time got to share on Facebook for me. Them's the rules. I don't make them up. Well, really I do, but it'd be really cool if you do that. Help me out by sharing with your friends. And by the way, if you want to be a super fan, hit the heart button. You can be a patron. Sign up and buy me a cup of coffee once a month. If you do, I'll give you a shout out by name on my next show. There's also show stickers and official mugs we'll send out to you. But in any case, remember, be safe, be good to each other, and try, just try to be happy. And until next time, I'm Ted Moss, and those are my thoughts.